Nami betrayed Luffy, Sanji abandoned him and beat him up, and Robin framed Luffy for assassination. However, in all of these circumstances, Luffy instantly forgave his crewmates because of his kind heart and belief in their true nature. But can you imagine what any other pirate would have done in these situations? What would the main antagonist Blackbeard have done? Or the ruthless Captain Kitts? In other words, what would have happened if instead of being kind-hearted and loving, Luffy was power-hungry and evil? And we're starting with chapter 1 when Luffy is first inspired to become a great pirate by Shanks. Now, this part of the story remains mostly the same except for one key difference. Luffy is still captured by bandits, Shanks still rescues Luffy and loses his arm, and the iconic straw hat still gets passed down to Luffy. However, the small but massively impactful difference comes when Shanks tells Luffy that he cannot join his crew. As you might remember, in the original, Shanks tells Luffy that he is too young to join the crew, but for the purpose of this video, let's assume that Shanks is going to tell Luffy that he is not strong enough to join the Red Hair Pirates. And as you will see, this apparently small change is going to make Luffy believe that he can only become a great pirate by becoming the most powerful one. And while to a certain degree Luffy does believe that, for this video, Luffy is taking this idea to an extreme level. And he also learned from Lucky Roo that in this world, you must kill or be killed. And you won't believe how this tiny little change is going to affect the battle at Marine Fort later on in the story. But for now, Shanks still leaves Dawn Island and Luffy spends 10 years training before setting out to gather his pirate crew. And unlike some of the other what if videos that we've done on this channel, such as what if Luffy had an Admiral's Devil Fruit or what if Luffy joined Shanks' crew, we're going to this time spend significant time focusing on the East Blue specifically because the dynamics of the Straw Hat crew in this scenario are going to massively change. So Luffy sets out eager to gather a strong crew and fight anyone in his path. He still loves to have fun and party, he still wants to become Pirate King, and he still has a way of convincing people to follow him. He's still very charismatic. However, now he is a very power-hungry pirate. As a result, he's significantly more cold-hearted and he has less emotional intelligence. Plus, he is willing to kill and he only wants crewmates who are strong or very useful to his crew. Now, the first person that Luffy meets is this pink-haired kid, Kobe. Luffy mocks the enslaved deck swap for being such a weakling and he still clobbers Alvida and sets him free, but instead of becoming Luffy's friend, this wannabe marine now vows to one day take Luffy down himself. Next up, we have Shell Island, and here Luffy would easily defeat the corrupt marine Captain Morgan and he would probably laugh at seeing Zoro all tied up. However, Luffy would probably still release Zoro after learning that he is a famous bounty hunter and then challenges him to a duel. And even though swords are Luffy's main weakness, he would probably still defeat Zoro somehow because the swordsman is pretty weak from not eating for so long. However, Luffy is quite impressed by Zoro's strength and instead of killing him, Luffy does invite Zoro to join his crew, which Zoro course, except because growing stronger is coincidentally also his goal. Now the pair then travels to Orange Town, where the story essentially plays out mostly the same way. Luffy defeats Buggy and he lets Nami come along because she's a badass navigator, something that the crew desperately needs. And Nami would want to join because she can steal Luffy's treasure later on. And Speaking of treasure, this version of Luffy would take most of the treasure from Buggy instead of just leaving it for the ruined town most likely. And so even with the changes to Luffy, we still have our first two crewmates and they would likely seek out other pirates to fight and pillage before landing at Usopp's hometown as well, Syrup Village. And this is where we have our first major change in the story. Because after defeating the fake butler Kudo, Luffy never invites Usopp to join the crew because of his weak fighting capability. So, sorry Usopp fans, our sniper stays at Zero Village, but at least in this version, he gets the girl. And no Usopp means no Mary either, so Luffy and the crew will need to steal a different ship somewhere along the way. However, next up is the Baratie, where the story takes a dramatic turn for the worse. The crew would still defeat this guy, no problem, but things get really interesting when the world's strongest swordsman Mihawk shows up again for the first time. Because a battle-hungry Luffy would never let Zoro have all 
the fun fighting such a strong opponent. And there are a lot of ways that this battle could go, but none of them are too good for the Straw Hats. Because we already saw Zoro almost die from the original encounter, and it could be even worse for Luffy because of his weakness to swords. In fact, it is quite likely that he could lose an arm or leg in this fight, but let's just assume that he gets lucky and he similarly gets a massive injury across his chest like Zoro, which would mean that the crew must now stay at Baratie to heal. And during this time, Luffy convinces Sanji to pursue his dream of finding the All Blue, so the cook once again joins the crew here as well. However, this prolonged recovery leaves Nami with the perfect chance to betray Luffy. She steals the treasure and the ship and she returns to her home island where she hopes to pay for the village's freedom. Now, this time, this really leaves Luffy pissed off by not only his defeat to Mihawk, but also that his crewmate would betray him just like that. And so we still head to Arlong Park where the enraged Luffy storms in, defeats the fishman Arlong who is terrorizing Nami's village, and Luffy is so furious that Nami betrayed him that he could even threaten to destroy her village itself, but let's just assume that he eventually allows her to rejoin because he respects what she's doing to protect her people and she really is very useful to the crew. Certainly, that takes a different kind of strength. However, now Nami's and Luffy's relationship is a lot shallower than it was in the original story. So while Luffy is technically still saving islands and people from other bad pirates, he is not gaining nearly as many friends and allies because he is fighting for quite selfish reasons. And keep watching to see how this will become the fatal flaw of Luffy later on. However, at this point, we've got the whole crew minus Usopp as they reach Loketown and the last island before the Grand Line. Here, Luffy is of course never captured by Buggy because <laughs> Buggy is uh, <clears throat> no longer alive, thanks. But Luffy is still helpless to fight the Marine Captain Smoker who ate the smoke Logia Devil Fruit. Luffy is still saved by his father dragon but the defeat does leave Luffy desperate to learn how to fight Logia fruit users so instead of a party as the crew enters the Grand Line an angry Luffy is just determined to grow much stronger and now the first person that they meet in the Grand Line is the former Pirate King's doctor Crocus and of course being a former Roger pirate means that he would surely know the basics at least of hockey so with the defeat to Smoka still on his mind Luffy convinces Crocus to teach him how to defeat Logia Fruit users, and this would require quite some time, but eventually the crew would learn the basics of armament and observation hockey, and pff, damn, it's going to make quite the difference to every single fight ahead in the story. Now, Vivi, the Prince of Alabasta, might still tag along with the hope that Luffy could somehow save her kingdom. She could even tempt Luffy with the promise of a strong opponent to fight on her home island. However, when the crew arrives on Drum Island, I don't think they could convince Chopper this time to join them, simply because Luffy would care more about his monstrous powers instead of his capabilities as a doctor. So no Chopper, but they do recruit some random Joe doctor to join their crew because they really need one. And so next, with no Chopper but this random Joe, they travel to Alabaster where Luffy is itching to fight another Warlord of the Sea after his disastrous defeat by Mihawk. And now that Luffy knows the basics of hockey, his fight with Crocodile goes a lot smoother. He can actually punch the Sand Logia Fruit user and eventually manages to defeat him. And so with Crocodile down, we now reach another incredibly interesting crossroads. While I think that Robin would definitely join the Straw Hats once again, she would also probably consider the Straw Hats to be just another group of bad guys that she could stay with to progress her very own plans. But the more interesting question would probably be, what happens with Crocodile? You see, we have many examples of other strong pirates recruiting defeated pirates to their crew. For example, the Emperor of the Sea Kaido tried to recruit Luffy after defeating the Straw Hat Captain in Wano at their first encounter. So while it is possible that Crocodile could just be arrested by the Marines again, this version of Luffy invites him to join the crew because he is a powerful fighter. And Crocodile accepts. So with two new crew members from from Alabasta, we do continue to Jaya and the fateful meeting with the Darkness Fruit Logia user Blackbeard. 
pirate. After Luffy makes an example out of this springy pirate, he would certainly challenge Blackbeard to a fight as well. And Blackbeard would welcome this because he is already gonna try to capture Luffy and turn him into the world government. And with Luffy's warped personality, these two would actually probably become quite similar. They're both hungry for power, they both believe in their dreams, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to achieve those dreams. And most importantly, they're both subscribed to this channel. But would you believe me if I told you that the similarity between them will lead them to joining forces later on? I mean, keep watching and find out why. But for now, we will assume that their fight essentially ends in some sort of draw and the Straw Hats fly up to Sky Island anyways. Here, they defeat the Lightning Fruit user Enel a lot easier because of Luffy's rubber body and also because of their experience with hockey. And here again, Luffy could maybe even try to recruit Enel into his crew, but I would imagine that Enel would probably decline this and still head for the moon. And at this point, Luffy's bounty is significantly higher than it was during the original story. No surprise here, because Luffy's obsession with strength would likely mean that he doesn't worry about causing destruction. So similarly to his rival Eustace Kit, his bounty would rise even higher and even faster. And after this, the Straw Hats now face one of their toughest challenges yet, the Admiral Aokiji. The Chili Fruit user has come to reclaim Robin, and he is simply way too powerful for the crew to take on. And this leads to an interesting dilemma. Since this version of Luffy has much less of a bond with his crewmates, it is possible that he could simply abandon Robin. However, much like he welcomed Nami back, in this case, he surprisingly decides to challenge the Admiral one-on-one -on -one for Robin's freedom. And Luffy wouldn't be quite as easily overwhelmed as he was back in chapter 321. This version of Luffy is stronger and knows hockey, but of course he would most likely still fairly quickly lose and have to be saved by the crew's doctor. Random Joe. But this takes us to Water 7, where the crew still needs a new ship after their crazy descent from Skypea. This arc plays out similar to the original, Luffy already put his neck on the line for Robin when he fought Aokiji, so he isn't going to let the world government take her now as well, duh. So the arc ends with Frankie making them a new ship before he joins the crew, and as an added bonus, Luffy is much more interested in Frankie's weapons and he demands more guns on the new ship as well. And now on board of their new ship, the Straw Hats seek out fights with other strong pirates and marines on the Grand Line before eventually reaching the zombie-infested floating island Thrilla Bark. Here, Luffy stomps the warlord Gekko Moria and Brooke joins the crew, and since the crew as a whole is much stronger here, they're also able to escape from the warlord Kuma without too much trouble this time. However, next is where it gets interesting. Next is Sabaoli, where the Straw Hats suffer an even worse defeat than they did in the original story. Now in chapter 506, we meet this old man, Silva's Rayleigh, who was the right hand of the former Pirate King Roger, and Rayleigh has actually been waiting for Luffy since the time that Shanks told him about a certain kid who resembled their former Captain Roger. And originally, Rayleigh helps the crew as they prepare to enter the new world, but in this version, things are going quite differently. Both Rayleigh and Shanks have heard of Luffy's cold-hearted journey through the Grand Line, and they now believe that Luffy is actually not fit to wear the Straw Hats. This leads to Rayleigh to demand that Luffy changes his ways or gives up the hat, and Luffy of course wouldn't pay him any attention, which would lead to a mind-blowing confrontation between the two. Rayleigh challenges Luffy for the right to the straw hat, and Luffy of course, still being Luffy kind of, has to accept here. And of course, Rayleigh, who was said to be nearly as strong as the former Pirate King himself, would destroy Luffy and take the hat from Luffy's unconscious head. Oh, bet you didn't have that on your bingo card, did you? Now, this result sends the story in many different ways. The first route we're going to explore has Luffy staying on Sabaody, where he vows to take the straw hat back from Rayleigh. However, it is also at this time that the world government announces that Luffy's brother Ace is going to be executed. So so Luffy and the crew head to Marineford, and just as much as Luffy wants to free Ace, he's equally excited to fight all the crazy strong marines and pirates who are coming to the war as well. Here, the Straw Hats arrive at Marineford just as the battle is underway, and while this version of the Straw Hats are definitely way stronger than they were in the original story at this point, they 
they are still no match for the combined might of Mihawk, the Cyborg Pacifista, and the Marine Admirals. And in this situation, let's be honest, it is also very likely that the Emperor of the Sea, Whitebeard, would not trust Luffy. So instead of really being allies here, they'd probably just get into each other's ways. This leads to Ace being executed as planned, meaning that Luffy failed even more miserably than in the original story. Perhaps a fitting lesson that the pursuit of power will not always get you what you want. And after this, assuming that Luffy even survives, he would most likely still be devastated over the loss of his brother and humiliated that he was too weak to save him. This could send him into an even deeper spiral where he becomes more desperate for power. And this mindset would probably set him on a similar track to the last man that tried to take over the world, Rox de Zebek. And while we don't know much about this pirate, we do know that he was insanely powerful and that he tried to kill the world nobles. And I think that this version of Luffy would take the same path and meet the same end where he would be killed in battle, never having regained the Straw Hats. Okay, but, but now let's back all the way up after Luffy's defeat to Rayleigh, because from here, option two and three follow mostly the same routes, but with a few decisive differences. In the original story, Luffy punches this world noble for trying to enslave his mermaid friend. While this version of Luffy wouldn't necessarily care about the slavery, I think his frustration after losing to Rayleigh could very easily cause him to attack a world noble anyway. Just like in the main story, this would summon the marines, the cyborg pacifista, and the admiral Kizaru to take out the straw hats. And while they might be able to survive the pacifista, and even Kuma maybe, who they already escaped from on Thriller Bark, in this version Rayleigh would clearly not save them from Kizaru. So Luffy would be captured, thrown into the underwater prison in Down and erased from the story. Or not quite. Remember, this is also around the time that Blackbeard breaks into Impel Down to recruit strong criminals to his crew. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So let's assume that Ace is still taken to Marineford. Blackbeard overthrows the prison and he takes the strongest prisoners with him, including, are you ready? Luffy. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Evil Luffy and Blackbeard are now part of the same crew. Well, for now. So the Blackbeard pirates travel to Marineford with the goal of killing Whitebeard and taking his devil fruit. However, this is where Luffy goes wild because at this point, Ace has already been executed. Luffy realizes that he failed to save his brother because he was locked in jail, which causes him to lose his mind. He starts to fight anyone in his path. Admirals, Whitebeard commanders, warlords of the sea. He would probably even awaken his conqueror's hockey due to the immense rage that he's in. However, this is when Shanks shows up to stop the war. Shanks demands that everyone stops fighting, and while the marines and other pirates start pulling back, Luffy refuses to quit. Shanks is also wearing Luffy's straw hat now, and in a rush of madness, Luffy challenges Shanks to a duel for the hand. Now, consider how Shanks would be feeling at this moment. He's facing the kid who he once entrusted with his treasured straw hat and the fate of the world. The kid who he hoped would grow up to become the next pirate king, but now standing before him is a twisted version who has been driven mad by his lust for power. Shanks, being who he is, initially tries to talk Luffy out of fighting, but Luffy will not give up and eventually Shanks agrees, hoping that he can teach Luffy a lesson and get him to change his ways in a last desperate attempt. However, if they do fight, this version of Luffy simply has no chance at all of defeating Shanks whatsoever. And it is here where we can split off into our final two options for how this could go for Luffy's future. One way this could go is that Shanks takes down Luffy, but as we've seen so often in the story, Luffy refuses to stay down. And even if Shanks begs him to stop, Luffy won't quit. He keeps coming for Shanks and the Red Hat Pirates, and ultimately, Shanks is left with no other choice. He has to kill the enraged and maddened Luffy. <sighs> And uh, as you might ask why Shanks would kill Luffy, well, if Shanks thinks that Luffy would be a danger to the world, similar to Rox, then it would make sense for him to put Luffy down, especially since he knows Luffy's devil fruit. Which now takes us to a third path and the one that we will be exploring a little bit more fully because it is honestly the most interesting. Let's imagine that Luffy has been knocked down by Shanks again and again, and Shanks' blade rests on Luffy's neck. And finally, the robber 
boy breaks down into tears. He lets out all of his stout up anger and frustration. He thinks back on his journey so far and all the cold hearted things that he has done. And he finally realizes that he has lost his way. After losing his brother in battle, he realizes that he cannot keep living like this and he wants to care about the people around him and regrets not caring more about his crew. After all, at his core, it's still the same Luffy as in our story, just misguided by Shanks' word at the beginning. And so seeing this, Shanks offers Luffy a choice. Come away from Marineford with him and learn how to be a great captain or die. And having had this epiphany, Luffy now accepts his former mentor's offer and after some time spent with the Red Hat Pirates, he is now reunited with his crew. And this takes us to the time skip. And now instead of spending the two years training separately, the crew spends this time bonding and forming the real relationship that they had in the original story. And after the time skip, the story would continue much as it had in the original story, only with a few of the crew members missing. And random Joe, you got it. And Luffy and his crew advance through the new world now with Luffy's greatest power. His ability to inspire others with his joyfulness, his friendship and his selflessness. Which is a lesson that he had to learn the hard way this time because he tried to overcome everything with strength and power but ultimately failed. In the end he was not strong enough and he nearly lost everything including his brother at Marineford. But this leads to an even more interesting question. What if Luffy had been strong enough to save Ace at Marineford. Could he have saved his brother if he had his current storyline powers? In other words, what would have happened if Gear 5 Luffy was at Marineford? If you want to find out, check out the video right here and thanks for watching.